Forte, the broadcaster. Uh, but before all of that, uh, let's talk about foreign aid and go straight uh, to Danielle Boxall of the Taxpayers Alliance. Uh, good morning, Danielle. Good morning. Uh, yes, there's two uh, events happened on the foreign aid uh, scene this week. First of all, the government uh, is accused of uh, circumnavigating Parliament uh, by bringing about uh, a reasonably drastic slash to the amount of money we spend on foreign aid. Basically, uh, we tend to spray around the world about ten billion dollars uh, pounds, uh, and that uh, may have been cut back by about four billion. Uh, lots of Tory MPs especially are objecting to this and they say it may have been an illegal move by the government uh, and they may take the government to court to reinstate this missing four billion quid. So that's one aspect of it. But what really intrigued me is SAGE. Our friends from SAGE have got involved in the argument and to uh, told the government you must not cut back foreign aid. Well, why don't they just stick to making their little models and what's it got to do with them? What is your feeling about SAGE? Age's intervention in this because I find it extraordinary. Yeah, well, I think I think it is. What what, what they've been saying is that um, foreign aid helps to prevent pandemics in the in future pandemics. So we shouldn't cut foreign aid because um, we don't want to have any more pandemics like coronavirus. Well, you know, I think most people they they think about foreign aid. They think, okay, well, we must be giving money to things like malaria nets, clean water projects, medical health, things like that. But actually, that's only about 70% of what we actually spend. And because of the arbitrary uh, aid target, a lot of the money goes to these sort of bizarre projects that we don't even quite understand what they're, what, what good they're doing. Yeah. I mean, things like £300,000 to evaluate uh, a possible sugar tax in Chile. I don't think that is stopping <laughs> a future I, pandemic Do you know, my, my favourite, Danielle, uh, you may have had this on your list of egregious examples of mm. what we fund abroad, but we are literally sending millions of pounds to China to help them learn how to grow rice, uh, which sounds yes, like sending yeah. sand to the Sahara, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was actually um, a project that we did with the Daily Mail in November. Um, so, yeah, we found that they spent uh, about, I think it was about half a million pounds on um, on, on helping them uh, grow their rice. But we also spent about half a million pounds on sending uh, the Sean the Sheep animation. I don't know if you, you know what <laughs> that on, is. Sorry. Go on, uh, yeah. I know what Sean... adapting that for China. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. And of course, we send a lot of money to India. Now, when you talk about China and India, you're talking about two of the most uh, amazing economies on the face of the earth. China is the second richest country on the face of the earth. Why on earth are we sending these vast uh, economies more money and uh, two countries that have their own space programs? It's just ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a perfectly uh, good question to ask. And not only does uh, China have its own space program, I think um, I think it was last week they sent uh, three new spy satellites into space, so uh, to spy on their neighbours, which is always nice to see. Um, but they've also got their own aid agency as well. So, uh, and also the news yesterday that they blacklisted some of our MPs. Uh, yet we're giving them money and we're carrying on doing so. so. I just don't I just don't see why we're doing that. Now, why do you... So Andrew Mitchell, for example, a very prominent Tory backbencher, is very, very vocal in opposing any cutback to our foreign aid budget. Uh, I'm not quite sure why he's so obsessed with it, but I suspect it's that people like Andrew and other uh, people of that generation, uh, they are the live aid generation. They're kind of addicted to giving money to people abroad, uh, some sort of old kind of throw back to colonialism or something but it's very it's, that seems to be to me what's going on but why is it that uh, the likes of Andrew Mitchell people you know traditional Tories are so keen on us spraying money around to uh, countries all over the world what what's their obsession with it well you know the, these politicians they say oh it's we should be proud we're very proud of how much money we give we're proud of how generous we are yeah, great. well you know <laughs> exactly it's just yeah, they're proud of uh, the money they're spending, but it's not their money that they're spending. It'd be fine if it was their money. I mean, the UK has a very proud history of uh, being a, a charitable nation in terms of uh, private charity. And we've got we've got many charities that are set up both at home and abroad. But uh, it's not their money they're spending. 
it, it's taxpayers money on these you know politicians virtue projects quite frankly and uh the government is basically going to do this uh i think uh, we're supposed to or previously we've been given oh point uh, seven percent of our gdp mm. uh, to foreign aid budgets and i think that goes down to am i right point five or is it point four percent yeah point five percent uh effectively we have been spending 10 billion pounds this will bring it down to about four mm. billion pounds uh but given the circumstances that we're all in now the absolutely devastated economy that we're having to endure and it's going to get worse i mean my real question here danielle is why are we sending a single <laughs> penny abroad yeah well um you mentioned that um we're cutting it we've actually already started it because the um the way the aid budget works is it works on a calendar year so it's a it's even its own sort of year it doesn't work with the financial year so we've already cut it to 0.5 percent um for this year and i think you said um 0.7 percent is about um 10 billion it's actually about uh, 15 billion pounds um of uh money and that's actually about three billion pounds uh, more than we spent on policing as well. So there's there's a lot of money there, and I think that money could go elsewhere. And especially given the economic circumstances that you mentioned, yeah, you know we. I mean, you could we could uh, you know the the police are always saying give us more officers. We could use this money to uh, restaff the police. Uh, the nurses are furious; they're only getting a one percent pay rise. Uh, we could take some of this foreign aid budget and give them a three or even a Nicola Sturgeon style four percent pay rise. I mean, well, there's untold things we could do with this money rather than sending it to China to teach them how to grow rice. Well, exactly. And, you know, the government has plenty of spending commitments that they're committed to. Uh, there's all the green projects, the windmills that they're trying to build, the infrastructure investments. Um, I think they want to build 40 hospitals or something like that. Mm. Uh, and they want to recruit thousands for police officers as well. So there's there's plenty of, of, of spending commitments that the government um, wants to achieve that they could uh, perhaps put some of this money towards. But, I mean, preferably for me, um, I think it should be going towards tax cuts if, you know, we want the co economy to get back, uh, to build back better and, uh, uh, and to get growing again. The best way to do that is by making tax cuts and, and helping people uh, during what is a very difficult time for, for most, I think. Uh, also, we've gone through a year where there's been a mission creep in terms of how much power Chris Whitty, Patrick Valance, Jonathan Van Tam and their mates from Sage assume that they've got. Now that they're shouting about the government uh, not cutting financial aid to uh, foreign countries, uh, isn't it about time that the government turned around and said, OK, this is it. Get back in your box. This has got nothing to do with you. Let us run the country and you carry on making your little model. Yeah, well, uh, the government has uh, started, it started, it's a good track record so far. I mean, they uh, they scrapped DFID and they put them into uh, the foreign office. So that was a good start. And then they cut the aid budget, um, as, we, as we mentioned. Um, but, you know, Boris, he says one thing and then does another. I mean, he said before that um, the aid budget would no longer be a giant cash pot in the sky for countries like India and China. So... Hopefully he sticks to his word and uh, and he stays stays true to what he's been saying. Uh, so I've got a money making uh, money saving idea, Daniel. What do you reckon of this? Let's uh, axe Sage. <laughs> yes, I think that would be uh, a good way of. Uh saving some money yes i think it would be very popular as well no more sage yeah, i mean that it. that's a, this uh roadmap to freedom you know june the 21st if they could also promise us along the way that sage would be phased out i think the uh, bunting would go out all over the country danielle thank you so much for your time at a very early point thank you